Okay, so the first trailer for Kraven the Hunter has just hit the web, and throughout this video we're going to be breaking down the easter eggs, hidden details, and things you missed in it. Your friendly neighbourhood spoiler man is back, and in this video I want to talk about what we know about the film, along with what's been shown in the teaser. There's also lots of comic book things to discuss too, and in case you're unaware of Kraven then, this is the video you've been craving. Sony, sorry, Sony are also making a lot of noise with him at the moment, and we also know that he's due to appear in the upcoming Spider-Man 2 game. That seems to be based loosely on the Ultimate Comics run, which had him travelling to New York to tackle the webhead, whereas this is going to be more of an origin story. In the comics, he was a big enemy to Peter, and was also known as Peter's worst enemy, eh? <laughs> However, things have been changed up for this with a film adaptation, and he's being described as being an animal lover. He also has his own metahuman abilities now, with a line attack leading to him being able to Doctor do little things and communicate with animals. This is an extra layer that hasn't been in the comics before, with him employing wolves to help him hunt people down. Now he gets these abilities because he refused to shoot a lion under the direction from his father, and this then leapt out and started to attack him. Science? It's all based on science. And he says that he stared death in the face, and we can even see a tarot card of this being pulled out. I think that this is probably from Calypso, who is a character we'll talk about later on in the video. Potentially he's dealing death to those that try and harm animals, which is going to put him at odds with his own dad. He of course wants Craven to shoot and kill a lion at one point, and makes it clear that this shows strength. We'll see how that works out, but it's also been stated that he's more of a conservationist here. That's quite clear from the way this trailer plays out, with it being bloody and brutal when it comes to humans, but not really too bad in terms of hunting wildlife. I know that this has become a bit of a sore point for fans, as Craven was basically a supervillain safari hunter, but I, I still think they can make stuff work with the R rating, even if we're getting Craven the vegan. When you think about it, Craven's known for hunting Spider Man, who is of course a human, so they can probably get around it, but yeah, but we're gonna see. Anyway, Craven first debuted in 1964's Amazing Spider Man 15, and since then we've learned the ins and outs of his backstory. Born to a Russian aristocrat, Sergei's dad Nikolai fled to the US during the Russian Revolution in order to escape the persecution of the elite. They obviously can't really use that due to the event taking place in 1917, so I think they'll probably go with something more modern like the fall of the Soviet Union or something. Anyway, Craven's father in the film will be played by Russell Crowe, who we hear narrating the trailer at several points. This teaser was actually shown at CinemaCon a couple of months back, and it apparently had a couple of different lines to what we get here. I'm not sure, as I can't fully compare it, but I did get told that the general theme was overall the same, so we aren't really missing that much. I think they are going to alter things slightly from the comics though, as we don't learn that much about him, but we do know that Nikolai is pretty different to what Crowe is supposed to be doing here. Nikolai supposedly just bought a place in New York after fleeing St. Petersburg, and his son kind of went off and did things on his own. Now he's clearly the bad guy here, with Craven saying that his father puts evil into the world while he takes it out. Also important to bear in mind that there's lots of different cuts of this teaser going about, so if I mention something that's not in the one you saw, then my bad, there's just so many versions of it. The one released at CinemaCon also had Craven travelling to more locations, and at one point we see him coming across his classic costume. This was shown at a different angle to how it appears here, with us getting more of the shot inside the box, which changes things up. Though they pitched it as being his, I think it probably belonged to his dad, and that he's going to inherit it come the end of the film. I can kind of see him taking on a sort of Ra's al Ghul, or Raz al Ghul as it is in Batman Begins, and though there's a couple of different villains in the teaser, I think we might get some misdirects over who the true one actually is. And I bet right, and I'd put money on this knowing Sony, but I bet the vest thing is uh, from the post credit scene, because them f***ing idiots, they just can't help themselves. Now, in case you don't know, Craven's half-brother is actually the Chameleon, and we know that he's going to be played in the film by Fred Hetchinger. The Chameleon is a master of disguise, he's the perfect mimic, and he's up there as being one of my favourite villains in the Spider-Verse. One of the first comic book runs I ever read was when he impersonated J. Jonah Jameson, which I still think I might have lying around. Need to eBay that. Now, I bought that at a comic book store when I was about 14, and reading through it page to page, it was such a good run that that gives me faith they can do a lot with the character. I'm really surprised that they've never properly lent into using him in live action before, and I was sure that they were going to with him being a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and far from home, but alas, that didn't happen. However, I think having this big family feud would be a really cool way to take things, and that sort of takes me into tea time. Tea time. Tea. Tea time. And the main person they're showing off in the teaser is of course the Rhino. 
played by Alessandro Nivola, you might recognise the actor from Face Off and Jurassic Park 3. The Rhino is of course a classic Spider-Man villain, and he's probably one of the big mainstays when it comes to bosses that the wall crawler has to tackle. I've beaten him on a number of games, read a number of stories with him, and he also of course popped up in Amazing Spider-Man 2. This idea of there being variant rhinos was also present in Across the Spider-Verse, as we had a multitude of rhinos appearing in the background of that cell scene. Typically in the comics, Rhino tends to be a guy in a suit, whereas here they're using chemicals to transform him into a human-rhino hybrid. Now if we look at the comics, it actually makes a lot of sense to have him being one of the big villains. Firstly, he's a rhino, so he ticks the hunting box, but beyond that, the character's also Russian. In the source material, Alexei Sistevich, <laughs> he was, dear me, he, he was experimented on with chemical and radiation treatments, and these increased his size and strength. From this point onwards, he started to rock the rhino armor, which began to bond with his skin. He wasn't actually able to remove it for years in the comics, whereas here he's done it through more of a transformation. It's possible that the serum has other applications too, and we might see it turning other characters into types of animals. Say right, getting on theory time again here. Say Chameleon takes it and turns into a chameleon. He could. Look, you get the idea with that. Now the trailer that I saw begins in what looks like the jolly old foggy streets of London. Also, if you can hear my kids screaming in the background, apologies for that. I'm, I'm like Russell Crowe in this movie. I'm trying to get them involved in this spoiler game, but they just want to ruin it all. Now we've got them big red buses and British license plates and it brings a, it brings a tear to me eye. Craven jumps on top of a car at one point and takes the drivers out, showing that he's more equipped than most to take down his father. Sounds like my kids are trying to take down this channel too, and the CinemaCon trailer did things slightly differently, as that had a number of mercenaries hunting for him out in Africa, which is when he got the drop on them. That then went to him wielding his classic machete, and this was a weapon that he carried in the comics. Instantly lets you know that the movie's here to earn its R rating, and it's probably the smartest thing that they could have done. And one thing that I never really got with the Sony Spider-Man spin-off stories is that they never really lent into how violent these things could be. They seemed scared to take the plunge, and instead of getting bad guys, all the characters just seemed to be anti-heroes. Though that's the case here with Kraven, yeah? He, he fits that a lot better than a living vampire and a symbiote, so it at least makes more sense here. However, we had stuff like the Carnage origin story that should have easily been a hard R, and instead they toned it right down. So I'm glad they're finally leaning in with it and taking it in the right direction for this character. Now when I talked about him being an anti-hero, I actually think that Kraven's one of the most complicated characters in comics. If you've ever read Kraven's Last Hunt, then you'll know it deals with the complexity of mental health issues and it ends with the character taking his own life. Desperate to be remembered as the greatest, he actually manages to beat Spider-Man and he buries him alive at the midpoint of the story. It's a really big thing that they could do in future films, and I think Aaron Taylor Johnson could actually carry this off. Now Craven is clearly leaning into more being like his mother, who we learn died when he and his brother were in their teens. Their father said she was weak, and thus he has had an influence over them. He only cares about honour and power, and, and sees killing animals as a form of trophies. His brother at one point says that he's exactly like their dad, just another man hunting for a trophy. Now this idea of being after a trophy is something that's followed Craven through every iteration. The Ultimate Universe had him being a sort of Steve Irwin TV star, but rather than protecting animals, he hunted them for the camera. This is what took him to New York, which is where he wanted to arrest Spider-Man on screen, which would cement him as the greatest. However, he was unable to do this, and he ended up being embarrassed multiple times throughout. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is to show how important Legacy is to the character, and we get the idea that he hasn't really made his name yet. He's out to hunt, show he's the best, and become someone who's known as the world's greatest predator. Probably could have worded that better. Sit down, Chris Hansen. Yeah, sit. I didn't mean it like that. Now, on top of this, we also know that Ariana Boss will be playing Calypso, a voodoo priestess who did the thing. Angela Bassett did the thing. Viola Davis, my woman king. The boss broke the internet with her BAFTA rap. Angela Bassett did the thing. Angela Bassett did the thing. Turn, turn it off, turn it off. But Calypso is actually a pretty big character in the comics. A big love interest of Craven, she somewhat caused the death of the character by constantly taunting him about Spider-Man, which pushed him towards a choice he made. Little is known about her role in the movie, but we do know that she'll be taking on the position of his lover, so they are following things closely. And we also have spiders dropping down on him out in the woods. This is obviously some Spider-Man tie-in, or something with it showing how he's attached to that world, even though we'll never meet him. 
I wonder how they're going to handle it, and it kind of reminds me of when Carnage killed that one in Venom 2, where it probably won't go anywhere. Now the trailer I saw ends with the tagline, Nothing survives the hunt, which has a double meaning to it, as Craven's going to be leaving nothing alive in his wake, but it's also playing on the fact that he's going to lose himself in doing that. I know they're trying to keep him as an anti-hero, but I'd love for them to tackle some stuff like how this quest will eventually cost him his soul. Sure, he'll gain a name, but he'll lose the person behind it, and I'm really hoping that they dive into that idea for the final film. Now that wraps things up, and you know, after seeing this, I, I was very hopeful, but th this didn't knock it out of the park for me. I have enjoyed their trailers in the past, but every time I've went to one of these movies, it it's made me realise they're not that good, and though I have a guilty pleasure in Venom, you know, there's there's lots of things wrong with their universe at the moment. I personally don't think it's going to be a groundbreaking piece of cinema, but the Venoms, like I said, have always been guilty pleasures, and at least with Morbius, we did get the memes. Now, I am hoping that with them leaning into the R rating, that it's the right thing to do, and that this is finally going to go in the direction that Sony should be going. I think this movie, you know, it's Sony, so it probably will do well, but you can kind of predict all the plot beats just off this trailer alone. Guessing that it's a big origin story, Craven builds his rep, his brother betrays him, and he has to run off out into the world. Basically the plot of Morbius as well, but yeah, we're not reinventing the wheel here. So yeah, I can kind of guess how I feel from that. Um, you know, I'm tempering my expectations, and I want to be excited, but th this wasn't a home run for me. However, I will of course keep you up to date with the movie. I I'm hoping that we get a lot of things that look better, and the more we learn about it. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Am I being a negative Nancy? You know, tell me below if you liked it, as I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys to see if there's something I missed and should appreciate more about it. If you want some else to watch, then make sure you check out one of our videos linked on screen now, and hopefully i see you over there right after this. Huge thank you for sticking through this with me. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown, and yeah, also hopefully see you over at the channel very soon. Out of the way, enjoy the rest of your week, mate. You take care. Peace.